Ladies, what is the most obvious hint you've dropped that went unnoticed by a guy? Story 1. Back when my boyfriend and I were just friends, there was a night I spent at his apartment after hanging out together all day. I was going to sleep on the couch, but I managed to talk my way into his bedroom. To get myself into his room, I think I said his roommates or his neighbors were too loud. He got back up to get me a pillow and a blanket so I could sleep on his floor. I had taken off my bra and had asked to borrow his sweater at this point. After a while, I joked that he was hogging all the blankets up in his bed. He finally invited me up. So then I said I couldn't sleep and suggested we stay up together to watch a movie. Netflix and chill. I had just read in an Ask Reddit thread that Jurassic Park was a good date movie, so I suggested we watch it on his phone. Without mentioning the date movie part, I was beyond nervous at this point. So we're in his bed, he's holding the phone above our eyes, and I decide to lean on his shoulder and slowly begin the process of inching closer to him. We laid there all night, curled up yet barely touching, neither of us breaking the spell for so much as a peck on the cheek. We fell asleep. He wouldn't end up asking me out until about five months later. We reenacted this scene on a hotel bed after sneaking up a bottle of wine from his office Christmas party. This time, I decided to stop being so shy. After a few sips of white wine, I finally felt brave. I looked up into his eyes and kissed him. Later that night, we admitted that our mutual hesitation during that first night was due to nerves from not wanting to risk our friendship for a one-night stand. The only potential problem in us jumping into a relationship was our distance, because we were living almost two hours away from each other. So less than a week after that, I took the bus down to stay for another night. I told him I loved him and that we should try being together anyway. We've been together ever since, and we're moving in together in a few weeks. Story 2. Size So I've actually did it with a girl before realizing she was actually into me. She knocks on my dorm room door wearing a miniskirt and carrying a chocolate cake, a whole chocolate cake, and says she just baked it and was wondering if I'd like to try some. I tell her that I'm not a big fan of chocolate, crushing her, but was intelligent enough to add that I'd like try it anyway. We set the cake aside. I invite her in and she asks what I'm up to. I tell her the truth, that I was about to start watching V for Vendetta, and she squeals that she loves that movie and asks if she can watch it with me. We lay down on my unfolded futon and start watching it together under a blanket. This was in the dead of Boston winter. We're watching the movie and she starts making all these comments about Hugo Weaving. I love Hugo Weaving so much. God, Hugo Weaving is so hot. Man, Hugo Weaving makes me so horny. And all this time I'm like yeah he's a great actor I loved him in the Matrix. Maybe 20 minutes pass by and all of a sudden I feel her rubbing up against me and she's, well, touching herself. Sorry, I hope you don't mind, I just got really horny and couldn't help myself. And here I am thinking I'm the luckiest dope in the world and I'm so glad I picked a movie that had Hugo Weaving in it. Of course I say something like oh, uh, that's okay. I understand. I have actresses that really do that for me, too. And I do absolutely nothing because I still don't get that she's coming on to me. And my mind, my very underdeveloped pathetic mind, my very first thoughts were Hugo Weaving is such a great wingman. And damn talk about being in the right place at the right time. It took me another year before I realized it was all a ruse to get to me and I could have been watching any damn movie at all the whole time with more or less the same result. Hey guys are you enjoying the video? If so please like and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyways, back to the stories. Story 3. The real cringe of it all is how criminally oblivious I was to the whole trajectory of everything going on. Girl comes over to my place in a skimpy tank top and miniskirt. Oh she just wants to share cake. Girl talks about how horny Hugo Weaving makes her in a movie where you never even see his face, BTW. Oh I hope it's not awkward for her being turned on next to me. Girl starts touching herself in my bed rubbing up against me. Oh, that's kind of weird you're masturbating to someone else in my bed, but I'm lucky enough to enjoy the show. Girl asks to blow me. Where did this come from? I just legitimately could not at any point predict what would happen next even though in retrospect it's painfully obvious that she was the one who decided she was going to frick me that night, and I just had to more or less not mess that up. It's like she handed me a one-colored Rubik's Cube and I still had trouble solving it. And the only color was intercourse. Story 4. When me and my fiancé were in high school we were best friends, which of course meant I was too big of a chicken to tell him how I really felt. Well, my move was to always take the seat in front of him and purposely have my thong showing while we had lectures. This went on for all the classes we had together, and we had a lot. I finally had to confess how I felt to him before he left our hometown for college after three years of this game. 
It turns out he was a chicken too. He said those four years were the biggest tease imaginable. It's hilarious to talk about now. Story 5. Not a girl but I got a hint once that flew by me few. So my former best friend and I. Sadly we do not talk to each other anymore thanks to an ex-girlfriend. We're very close. So close even. That I fell in love with her and she apparently was with me. So we met more often during the evening. Sometimes late at night, watched movies, hung out. She got way more direct with me about being interested in me. When she was dressing up for a party and had en bra on because she was just sitting at home. She suddenly started telling me that I would not need to leave the room when she was changing clothes all of the sudden. She went all cuddly on the couch when we watched movies and I was literally thinking I could make a move but I am very happy with the friendship I got. We even went partying and a dude started dancing with her. When she all of the sudden said something to him, pointed at me and the dude ran off, probably said something about me being her boyfriend. But I my train of thought was she probably was not interested in that guy. The apex of my failure however was that one night, we ordered some food, hung out and we talked about the scenario. That if a person insists on someone to sleep at their place even though he, she knows the other person is not too far away from home. That is clearly a hint. Later that evening, I was about to go home. It was late at night and I had to walk 25 minutes max. So it was not that far. She said you know, you can sleep here, we are all alone. Since she was living with her mother who stayed at her boyfriend's place most of the week. And I literally said nah, I am good, it isn't that far anyways. Those two conversations were apart like, 5 minutes 10 minutes. A bonus on top of my cluelessness, for her 21st birthday I gave her an iPhone. In front of all people, she went to me, hugged me, said that there is only one thing to make this moment perfect and looked me deep in the eyes. I did no thing. Seriously, if I would have had a time machine, I would have kicked myself into reacting right now, since it could have been the best relationship in my life. Lesson learned, if you do not act, you get crap on. Edit, sorry for not answering since it was late at night here in Germany, and I had to go to bed but few. Thanks for so many answers and encouraging words. Since there are so many answers telling me I should call her, I will try tomorrow, since it is Father's Day here, and will edit this again after I call her to tell you how it went. For those asking how long we were not talking, October 2014. We saw each other while getting groceries three times I think and I ran into her while training for a half marathon but I tried saying hi once. This was shortly after we had the falling out and she did not say anything which really threw me off so much that I did not try again and as far as I know she is single as am I. EDIT too, so I won't talk around the outcome too long since most of you were very excited how it went. Sadly, she changed her phone number over the last two years, which lead me to me going to her house seeing if either she or her mother was there. In a stroke of bad luck, she must have moved out recently. I knew she wanted to move out for quite a while to live on her own while her mother moved in with her boyfriend which means, the chances are quite low in talking to her as of right now. But, we shared a lot of the same friends from school and have had mostly the same social circle for years, from well. Being best friends, I am hoping to see her at a party in about three weeks. If she is there, I will start a conversation and explain myself. If there is an outcome either way, I will keep you updated but for now, this is sadly it. I am however thankful for all the support you gave me since I would have never taken that chance if all of you haven't been there. And I hope this entire thing will have a conclusion in a few weeks. Final edit. This will be my final edit, since basically everything came to a close. As I said, I texted her on Facebook. She answered and we decided to meet last night. And so we did. We talked everything through, everything from all the past drama, what mistakes we made, how we both made mistakes and how I was a total idiot for not recognizing what she was hinting at. It was weird at first talking so open about feelings you had years ago but we got there. I even mentioned how you guys helped me take initiative and it made her laugh that thousands of people pushed me to go talk to her. At the end of the night, we really didn't know what to do with ourselves. Of course we couldn't just go at it or say we are in a relationship now. As I said, we haven't talked to each other for quite some time and we have become slightly different people. But we were both okay to start by going on a date, catching up and getting to know each other better again and see from where it goes from there. I want to thank all of you guys for supporting me and pushing me towards the right choice and if everything works out, happiness. In the end, I am more than baffled that from a single post about how I am an absolute idiot for not getting a hint, something like this can evolve and that there are always two sides to everything especially the internet where most of the time, toxicity is the normality, and the support and kindness I received is something more rare. Basically, thank you for helping me. Update. So, many of you people wrote me PMs and wanted to know what happened and how things are going. Short answer, things are going great. 
We are a happy couple and just enjoy ourselves. It was awkward for our friends at first but things basically became normal after a while. For my part, you guys motivated me to get something or better put someone back that I have gave up two years earlier. Seriously you guys made my year one of the best years in my entire life. For that I thank you so much. I appreciate the two golds I got, which were my first two ever so another thanks to those who gave it. Story 6. Fellow fool here. I was a nerd in high school before nerds were cool. 1988. But I was lab partners with the two most popular girls in school. One was cheerleader captain and the other was SGAVP and they were gorgeous. Despite my nerd status, they found me interesting. At the end of senior year, prom conversations started but I was not going. I didn't have a girlfriend and only had a couple dates in high school, and the easiest way to avoid all that BS was to simply not go. Then they cornered me. Them, who are you taking to prom? Me, no one. I'm not going. Them, you have to go. Everyone is going. Me, nah, it's not my thing. Besides, who would I go with? Them, you should ask Jonelle, the other cheerleader captain who recently broke up with her boyfriend. Me, what? She'd never go with me. Them, oh, I bet she would if you asked her. Me, no way. Them, you have to. Me, nope. What I didn't realize at the time was that girls operate differently from boys. This wasn't some random conversation. There was no betting on their part. This was all planned with Jonelle's blessing. This was the three most popular girls in school plotting to get me, a nerd, to ask one of them to prom and I didn't freaking realize it. What a S-H-O-U-L-D-A could it didn't. Story 7. Texting him every day, he thought I was doing it in a friendly manner. Calling him cute names, he though I was kidding. Asking him to judge my outfits, he didn't think nothing of it. Making bets with him, the loser had to have something done which always revolved around intercourse, just joking. I had to tell him I would have liked to do it with him when I was tipsy, for him to realize I liked him. In the end I'm glad I've had something to drink that day, or we wouldn't have been together for 7 years. Edit, I want to clarify something. This isn't the way I normally act with my male friends. I like to have clear boundaries. So, as I saw it, I was giving away some pretty clear clues. And when I was tipsy he didn't act on what I was telling him. He took the hint and that was it. But that lead to talking about our mutual feelings the day after. Edit 2, more clarification. I'm not a person who usually texts or calls a lot, and he knew it. Neither I usually give cute nicknames to my friends. The outfits I asked him to judge weren't my everyday outfits, but miniskirts and or tops that showed a lot of cleavage put an embarrassed face here. Anyway, I think that what could be normal for some girls is an exception for others. It all depends on personality. But I have to thank you all because you made me understand why he didn't take my hints back then. Even if three months and I expected him to know a little about me. Story 8. Two come to mind. Once a guy complimented me on my perfume and said something like, You smell nice, is it Victoria's Secret? And I said, it's not from Versus, but I have something from Versus I can show you. He said, what? Like not a sexy what? Like a genuinely confused one. My other one is, there was an almost one night stand. Unfortunately, the night ended, but we both explicitly said that we wanted to do it. So he hits me up for a booty call, but I had just gotten a tattoo and I told him to wait a day or two BC. I just got a tattoo. He said, all via text. Where? I said, you'll need to come find it sometime later this week. And he said, why can't you just tell me where it is? Sorry, I'm trying to be mysterious and crap. Edit. So I don't have eyebrows, so I got my eyebrows tattooed on because I was tired of drawing them in. So they were swollen and crap, the reason for asking him to wait. But it doesn't look like a tattoo, it looks normal. But I have another tattoo I was going to let him look for. So a bit of a white lie in that one with him but not a lie to you Reddit people. I would never lie on the internet. Story 9. I went to this girl's house and we were just hanging out in her basement. She took out her laptop and was like let's check out my tumbler and I was just like okay let's do it. So she set the laptop on the ground and I laid down right in front of it and she straddled me from behind and laid down on me. She scrolls through her tumbler and it's all gifs and images and she keeps saying oh I wanna do this and that. After like 30 minutes of this, she went to drive me home and as she dropped me off she told me that she thought I was gay. Edit. Okay since some people asked here's my cringiest story. During the winter of my junior year of my high school I went to this girl's house to have some hot chocolate. It was cold outside. I was supposed to go with my friend but he caught a cold and couldn't make it so it was just me and her. Her mom was upstairs in her room giving us space wink. So I'm just laying down on her couch sipping some delish cocoa and then she lays down right next to me like a spooning situation. I'm talking direct contact, junk to butt. So me being the autismo that I am I jump up and yell stop. 
I don't want AIDS. She is like really embarrassed and tells me to calm down because her mom is upstairs and it was a long awkward silence before I left. Story 10. An Asian coworker, we were recent grads, said she was donating some clothes near my place to her friend in the next building and asked if she could see me. So I went downstairs and we sat at a bench and started talking. Right away she asked if we could go upstairs. So we did. And I talked to her, played her the few songs I know on the guitar, served her desert and talked some more. But there was a break in conversation where she was literally on my bed lying down in a pose, playing with her hair, and smiling at me and all I could think was, I think I did a good job hosting and entertaining you so now what? I didn't say that of course but she left a little after that all frustrated and said while leaving you are clueless. There was even a moment when I gave the guitar to her because I remember seeing a picture of her holding a guitar and thought she could play. She couldn't so she was trying to put it on the wall mount I have for my guitar but was having some trouble putting it in. Which by the way is the simplest thing in the world to do you just lift and place it. But she was sticking her body out and wanted me to help her and I did but somehow despite the restrictions of space and the near impossibility of avoiding bodily contact with her while helping her, I managed to do it all without laying a hand on her or rubbing up on her and thought to myself good job you didn't take advantage of the situation and potentially make her uncomfortable. I don't want to miss any more opportunities. Please help me. Story 11. This happened about two years ago. We met at a party at his place. My friend was banging his roommate and we ended up at a party at their place after I took her out for drinks on her B-day. We hit it off and flirted a little, exchanged numbers etc. He and I seemed to be flirting hardcore. One night I ended up going over to his place at 2 a.m. Spent the night. Despite all the flirting over the phone and when he was drinking the night of the party nothing happened. I thought maybe he was just too shy to make a move. Then our sleepovers became a common occurrence, at least twice a week, for two weeks, constantly texting. I got so tired of waiting on him to make a move. In the early hours of the morning I decided to take my clothes off and wait for him to wake up. This motherfucker woke up and tried to hand me my clothes and said I must have gotten hot in my sleep. At that point I kinda just pounced on him and he eventually got it. But holy hot damn, it took forever. Story 12. My ex and I had a code for I need to frick right now. For when we were around people and couldn't find the right opportunity to give the hint. It was established. We had used it many times by this point. This was maybe 8 or so years ago by the way. The code was hey is it 3.30 yet? And regardless of what time it actually was we'd check a clock, watch, or phone and respond yes and take off as if we had some scheduled thing we needed to make it to. Most of our friends never figured it out and we left a lot of people confused saying it was 330 out of nowhere in the middle of conversations and events and just taking off like something was on fire. Anyways, one night with a group of friends, alcohol, beer pong, loud music, and card games the usual. She is playing in my hair with a beer in the other hand and says is it 330 yet? I pull out my cell phone. And it's literally 3 something but not quite literally 330 I think the actual proximity of the time to being literally 330 threw off my understanding and the alcohol. I said no it's 3 and continued on with whatever conversation I was having lol. I distinctly remember her just pausing abruptly confused and I'm sure my response sobered her up immediately. She burst into laughter and says okay. So the night finally ends and she had already ducked off into the room she wanted to sleep in. I make my way in however long later. She trips me as I come into the room I about bust my head against the corner of the bed. And she says these exact words lol next time I ask you if it's 330. You better pull your junk out instead of your phone or we're going to have some problems. Intercourse with her was incredible. But her appetite was way higher than mine and I couldn't keep up at the time which is part of why we aren't together anymore lol. I facebombed as I laid there on the phone and I realized I was a freaking idiot lol. Story 13. Strap yourselves in. This is gonna be a long one. I had this guy friend I accidentally fell for a while back. A year into knowing each other we hit that weird stage of flirtatious banter in our friendship that's usually reached when both parties are sort of attracted to each other but nobody really has the guts to make the first move. After about half a year it got to ridiculous heights, ironically calling each other sweetheart, darling etc. Playful groping. Just generally lots of casual touching. At that point most of the regulars in the bar we frequented just kind of assumed we were dating already. But no, still neither of us dared to actually make the first move. At this point, it had just kind of become routine for me to come up with some kind of flimsy excuse like not wanting to walk all the way back home. And for him to invite me to spend the night at his place if we happened to run into each other at the aforementioned bar. I figured he would catch on eventually but still, no attempts to take this strange not dating thing to the next level were made. 
I'd sit on his bed changing into a pair of his boxers and a t-shirt of his while he was in the same room. We'd cuddle up and go to sleep then spend the next morning still cuddled up just talking about anything that came to mind. When even my most obvious attempts at provoking him into action either failed, we're talking about straight up straddling his lap and flirtatious banter or were met with mild amusement. Not to mention that one time he thought it'd be appropriate to talk about a friend's ex-girlfriend whom he found really attractive, but couldn't make a move on because bro code while he was literally spooned to my back. I accepted the fact that apparently I had missed the friend zone by a mile and went straight into the zone of sentient cuddle blanket and that it was time to bury these pesky little feelings and move on with my life. This man obviously did not feel a single ounce of attraction towards me. So another year passes, no more flirting, no more cuddling, most importantly no more sleepovers. And since he didn't seem to mind, I considered my assumptions confirmed. You can smell the not surprising at all plot twist from a mile away, can't you? Cut to another evening in that faithful bar, alcohol was consumed, random incidents were brought up. Jokes that bore a little too much truth were made and somehow the two of us found ourselves in the midst of a conversation about times past we were neither sober nor sensible enough to hold. An ex-lover boy that could have been but never was speaks the fateful words, yeah, I used to be really attracted to you, but I just didn't think you were interested. Mind you, this was said to me by the man, who had had me sitting on his lap while wearing his clothes in his bed as my bra lay abandoned on the floor. And that, dear fellow Redditors, is how I learned to never ever underestimate the power of male obliviousness. At least it makes for a mildly entertaining anecdote. I might go back and edit this tomorrow for better legibility. Hey guys, just found out you watched till the end, that is awesome, also. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories.